Okay, so here's what we're doing today. I make a lot of these river charcuterie or serving birds with the resin center. Uh, the problem with these is you have to make a mold. Uh, I usually make the mold out of melanine and then I use black caulk to finish it. I use black so that I can make sure that I see that it's covering everywhere. The problem is that once the mold is made and you put the uh, piece of wood in there and you pour the resin, when, you, when that's all dry and you pull it out, the mold usually is not reusable. And since I make a lot of these, I'm trying to figure out, is there a way that I can make a mold that uh, I can keep reusing? So here's what I've done. I've made this melanine board just like I normally would, sealed it, and I have covered it in uh, this, uh, this tape, this plastic tape. And I've also made a, uh, about an inch and a half block. That's the size of the serving boards that I want. And so the idea is this is going to go in here, and I am going to pour this, uh, it's called EnduroFlex. It says that it's, what does it say, firm rubber. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. So the idea is that I'm going to fill the outside edges. I've got a half inch around each uh, edge. I'm going to fill that with this firm rubber. I'm going to let it dry. And hopefully what I end up with is a, is a mold that I can use for these river tables, for 12 inch, or not river tables, river uh, charcuterie or serving boards. And I'll be able to make a 12 inch one over and over and over again with the same thing. Now, I've never worked this stuff. It says firm rubber. I hope that's exactly what I'm going to get. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some of this up. And I'm going to pour it in. Now before I do that, I've got some tiny little pieces of wood. And I'm going to stick these down. And my, my concern is that the um, when I pour this rubber stuff, it's and then I put the wood in, the wood is going to squish the rubber stuff out and the wood is going to go too close to the melanine and not give me enough of a layer of the rubber. And that would not be good. So I'm just going to stick these little things in there and uh, I'll put the wood on top of those after I poured the base of rubber at the bottom and I, I, I think that this is thin enough wood that I'll be able to get the full layer that I want of, uh, of rubber and yet at the same time be able to get this in on top of it, put that down so it just holds them in place while they dry. All right, so I'm gonna get this mixed up and then we'll show the pour and see how it works. Okay, well I'm going to call this a success. It was a little tough to get out the, uh, get the middle block out, it's actually ripped off the tape. But I did get it out and it actually came out very clean. Um, it, is, it is stiff, but it is flexible, so uh, this will allow me to cut 12 foot sections of wood with a live edge in the center like that. And pour the resin in there, like, and honestly I get, I'm thinking I can probably use a clamp right here. Just a little bit of pinch on the side will hold that in place and keep it from floating. Um, it, it's a little uneven on the bottom, but I don't see how that happened. I'm not quite sure how to avoid it in the future. It, it, they're very minor uh, 
kind of divots, I guess. But um, that's that's fine because I'm going to end up running the running the cutting board through a router when it's done anyway. So it's going to work. <laughs>